in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you lovely students? I hope you all are well. So I welcome you once again in Pakistan International School Thai's virtual learning class for the grade seven for subject science. Dear students, we are on chapter number four, environment and feeding relationship. And our today's topic is adaptations of living organisms, plants and animals according to their habitats, as well as we will see some biotic components and their feeding relationships. Dear students, if you see adaptations of organisms to live in a habitat, you see that Organisms like plants and animals have many ways to survive and be successful. Adaptation means, what is adaptation actually? The process which enables organisms to adjust to their environment in order to ensure survival. So organisms change themselves to survive in an environment if they don't change definitely they would die and their um, their species their group will be extinct from the earth like will be finished from the earth so to uh, be the part of that environment they have to ensure some changes inside uh, them and that process is called that process is called adaptation you see different different types of organisms are present why the natures have made because they have uh, to be adopted and they have to be made themselves according to their habitats like this so if we see here an adaptation is a change in organisms body or behavior that helps it to survive in its habitat. So organisms that are not well adapted to their habitat may not survive in that environment. So there are two basic types of habitats, but later on we have further divided uh, them into different uh, minor habitats as well, but uh, the most important, there are two. One is aquatic habitats, another is terrestrial habitats. First of all, we will see aquatic habitats and the adaptations of the organisms according to them. Animals and plants living in aquatic habitats have such body parts that help them to live in water. For example, number one, they are having streamlined body body shape is different by which animals can move through the water they are having webbed feet which help them to swim and move in the water and some plants are having different uh, adaptations as well for example they are having floating leaves submerged roots as well as their bodies is having uh, spaces and they are having waxy covering to prevent water from collecting on them. So if we see this aquatic ad ad adaptations in animals, so first of all we'll see streamlined body. So if we see here in streamlined body, the body of an organism just like a fish, like it is tapered or pointed from the front and at the back and it is flat or broad from the center due to which it can cut the water pressure and it can move very easily into the water so the organisms which live in the water they are having streamlined body like we are having streamlined body to move in the air as well like aeroplane like rockets they are like tapered from the front like this 
and at the back there is uh, fuel but here it is tapered just to move away in the air like this all the animals which live in the water they are having streamlined body like you can see here the fishes as well as they are having gills here they don't have lungs and uh, they can just breathe and take oxygen through the gills and the water which is present in uh, uh, like where they are uh, present as well as streamlined shape you can see of this a shark this is tapered from here and at the back as well if you see this one streamlined body this fish this is properly indicated as well as if you see here dolphins are moving and swimming around in the sea very fascinating it looks like uh, like amazing so they are having tapered body from the front and at the back as well okay the next one if we see the uh, its next um, adaptation that is webbed feet web feet of organisms uh, like they are modified limbs like aquatic animals have modified and adapted limbs and they help to move in water for example uh, this is goose or uh, seagulls like long birds which is mostly just uh, prey on the fishes in the water as well as look this is webbed feet like in the fingers they are having uh, skin this is called webbed feet for swimming and frogs are also having the same type of limbs if we see aquatic adaptations in the plant so we can see uh, plants are having floating leaves so they are floating uh, maybe they are living if they are living in the uh, ponds so you can see they are having um, uh, floating plants or floating leaves of which uh, give these uh, flowers or these plants a strength to live in the water as well as they are having a spongy and soft um, uh, surfaces as well as uh, look they are flat leaves they are having and uh, the next one they are having submerged roots for example this is uh, the layer pond uh, water surface and the roots are submerged here and they just take the nutrition from these roots this is water hyacinth and uh, it is having very beautiful flowers flat leaves as well as the the next that the air filled leaves these leaves some leaves are air filled so that they uh, keep these plants on the surface of the water and a thick waxy layer and shiny layer on the surface of the water so that water cannot be accumulated in these leaves uh, the best examples are lotus this one lotus and duckweed this one and hyacinth like this if we see the land adaptations of uh, the animals or the uh, plants which live in uh, the land especially polar regions desert regions and forest regions so we will observe uh, some of the adaptations so here are some land adaptations adaptations in animals of polar regions if you see this polar bear it is having small ears due to that it can reduce the heat loss so um, uh, means if it, it is having if we see in the desert adaptation so animals are having long ears because long ears having lots of vessels inside it so it can just um, um, uh, release the heat from the body but here the ears are small just uh, to uh, capture or to reduce the heat loss and to keep them in the body uh, as well as they are having a thick white uh, fur white fur to camouflage in the snow you like to hide in the snow so that um, no other uh, like predator uh, can just prey on that and 
as well as a thick fur to keep their body warm for a longer period of time. To insulate, insulate means to just reduce the heat loss from their body, as well as they are having large paws like this type of they are large uh, uh, feet flat feet just so that they do not sink in the snow they can move properly and as well as sharp teeth to prey easily uh, polar bear and snowy uh, owl like this is the example of bird that the, uh, birds which are over there especially snowy owl, owl they are having um, very heavy feathers on that so that they can uh, insulate their body and keep the heat inside their body to keep them warm. If we see the land adaptations in the desert plants. So first we'll see their thin, uh, thick skin. You can take the example, uh, assume the example of cactus and euphorbia. This is euphorbia, this is cactus. So in the cactus, what happened? They are having large stems that uh, store uh, their uh, water, large stems. Everywhere there are stems, stems. We can see the stems only, no leaves. If the leaves are there, so they are having, you see here, spines instead of the leaves to reduce um, evaporation, like what uh, through the leaves uh, from the stomata, we know that water releases out, but because their leaves are not broad, they're just spiny, so water does not escape out of the body, just uh, it leaves inside the body. And um, just they are having thick waxy skin, thin spiny leaves and thick skin just to, to keep the water inside and to reduce the water loss. So uh, if you touch this one, uh, like uh, aloe vera as well, so you, uh, you just uh, feel that their leaves are too much fleshy and juicy because hard outer skin is there which protects the water loss and water just kept inside their stems as well as they are having broad uh, spread root system like if you, we see that uh, uh, dates and uh, which plants like cactus they cannot pull it off easily because they are having a strong um, roots uh, in the search of uh, water. If we see adaptations in desert animals now, so the very, very important adaptation is hibernation. Hibernation means to hide under uh, <clears throat> some support, to hide under some unfavorable, in the, some unfavorable conditions. For example, you see this lizard, this is a hiding under uh, this sand in the uh, scorching day heat uh, in the desert uh, to reduce, uh, to keep it uh, cool down as well as uh, uh, just uh, to save it from the water loss. And that is also jackrabbit that also uh, having uh, the same type of hibernation mostly animals just hide during the day uh, and just uh, comes out in the search of food and other activities in the night time because in the day there is uh, too much high temperature over there so uh, just to keep them safe uh, from water loss as well as uh, uh, to keep them cool they hide in uh, under some support or inside the cold places so if we see this jackrabbit is also having long ears, so that is having blood vessels inside it that give off heat and make their body cool as well. Very important adaptations in the camel that is, uh, that is also called ship of the desert. Number one, it is having broad feet, padded feet. You see this one? broad flat leathery pads which help them to run on the 
uh, this sand and uh, their feet and uh, limbs does not uh, sink into the sand. Number two, it is having a large stomach, large stomach just uh, to capture or uh, to uh, like um, store more and more food and water inside it as well as large hump. Large hump is used to store fat, which is an energy reserve. And that is if it does not eat for longer period of time, for months, so we can say, so it can survive in the desert because it stores lots of fat. That fat uh, uh, stores in the a hump and it utilizes gradually its bodies utilizes this fat on regular basis so after if it does not get any food or water so this hump gets shorter and shorter due to the consumption of the fat as well as long eyelashes to protect from the um, uh, scent as well as from the sunlight and it is also having a thick fur this is not for only camel but lots all the animals which are present in the desert they are having a thick skin and thick fur which protects them from uh, the water loss and from the heat of the sun as well if you see lots of other examples of this and uh, these desert animals are there so, uh, and also they are having such type of color, complexion or skin color, uh, which can be camouflaged uh, with the surface just to avoid predators. That is called camouflage or changing of the skin color. Now, if we see some adaptations in the behavior of different um, organisms, if we see they produce a different sounds. So howling of wolves, and a roaring of lions, like they roar, they howling, that is the sounds of, of uh, like uh, the names of their sounds, as well as uh, singing of the birds and lots of other sounds in certain, uh, in different areas that helps uh, them uh, just um, as a signal to call their, um, uh, to call their uh, group members uh, to uh, survive or to save them from other uh, like from the dangers as well as uh, uh, that is very very important uh, behavioral adaptation among the organisms if there is any danger they howl roar or sing to call other uh, group members if we see the adaptation in plants of a rainforest, so you can see they are very tall trees. The uh, rainforests are lush green due to more rainfall, as well as there are lots of lots of trees which are herbs, which are just on the ground, shrubs, which are just uh, above the grounds. But there are tall trees as well. You can see the height of the trees in meters. And they just, um, the trees uh, just try to reach uh, very very uh, high so that they can get more sunlight to do more photosynthesis and that is very important adaptation for the rainforest trees for their survival very important adaptation in the rainforest animal that can be a rainforest or anywhere that can be present in the desert as well this is desert and this is rainforest uh, one that is the chameleon Chameleon is having different feature and that is the camouflage or um, adaptation of the changing of colors where it says it's changing the color according to that if you see this one it doesn't seem that it is a chameleon that just a stem or like that it also and it just looks like leaves so it changes the colors to captures the insects and it sprays and it is having long sticky uh, tip the tongue uh, very long to capture from long distance uh, that it can capture its praise. 
the other topic of this uh, um, lecture uh, today that is biotic components and their feeder uh, feeding uh, relationships so that is um, feeding relationship is dependent on energy resources and the main energy source of all the ecosystem is what that is our sun on the earth without sun there is no life so sunlight because plants take food from sunlight and every living organisms directly or indirectly uh, depends on uh, that plants so the uh, energy source is a sun but the main important part of that um, a biotic component that is plants and that is called producers because they produce a food for others so producers is the first level of this feeding relationship if we see if we just uh, check in the next uh, examples also so uh, who eats the plant uh, definitely the animals eat them eat the plants and they eat plants and other animals that eat them, eat the plants. So thus animals are consumers. All type of animals are consumers, but there is uh, different types of consumers. Primary consumers, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and so on. The first level of animals which eat these plants that is called primary consumer and secondary consumer eats the primary consumer tertiary consumer eats secondary consumer and the chain is going on that is called food chain primary consumer which eat the herbivores they are called uh, sorry uh, which eat the plants the producers they are called herbivores so you can see here lots of producers and consumers all green plants are producers this is herbivore or primary consumer or uh, we can see this one secondary consumer and like that we are having ponds and terrestrial food chains as well so uh, in this chapter we have studied about ecosystem and in ecosystem, we have just uh, checked about abiotic factors, about air, water, wind, soil, temperature, and rainfall. What are the effects of these and what is the relationship of these factors on living organisms and the ecosystems and the habitats? Now we will see biotic factors. And in biotic factors, we know about that the um, number one is producers which make the food which produce the food then consumers and then decomposers we will talk them uh, about the decomposers in the last and consumers are of also having different types primary consumers they are called herbivores secondary consumers they are called primary carnivores carnivores means they eat flesh of others like they kill the animals and then they eat and tertiary consumers they are called secondary consumers like they eat them so if we see here there are two type of feeding relationships number one is food chain if you see that energy flow from one organism to another is called food chain like sun is the source of energy and producer is uh, making the uh, food from the sun then consumer number one grasshopper eats the plant frogs consumer number two or secondary consumer they eat uh, this grasshopper and tertiary consumer they eat this uh, frog and the next one final consumer that is all called quaternary consumer but this is not important here just a final consumer they eat tertiary consumer if we see another example you can just see clearly here the plants are producing a food grasshopper is eating primary consumer and then secondary consumer and tertiary consumer and then uh, final consumer 
and this is decomposers what are these we will talk there after some time there are some other examples of food chains these are producers herbivores and um, carnivores like herbivores eat producers and carnivores eat uh, herbivores so um, eaten and being eaten process in a chain form that is called uh, food chain so you can see another example of terrestrial uh, food chain or that can be a uh, uh, pond a uh, food chain or that can that is um, also the sea or uh, uh, water or aquatic uh, a food chain here are seaweed small plants fish eat these small plants these small fishes are eaten by this large and uh, this uh, large fishes are eaten by the bird so uh, sorry arrows must go this direction okay if we see the next uh, relationship of that that is food web web name is given because it makes the web like structure if you see here producers are eaten uh, by uh, consumers consumers can be uh, like um, that can be herbivores or that can be other plants one is eaten and other is being eaten so uh, that makes a food web there are several food chains one you can see this one is one food chain this is the last other one this one is second so here this one is um, you can see the third one here so there are lots of food chains here so here in your book there is an example that a lion does not eat um, entirely on deer uh, just deer or goat this is first food chain this is not only uh, um, the food relation feeding relationship but that plants can eaten be rabbit and jackal and a lion just eat can uh, jackal and as well as plants eaten by deer and lion eats the deer and that is eaten by rats and rat, um, owl is uh, the consumer and as well as if you see like this snake snake is kite that is also the final consumers so final consumers when they die or any organism die from here so they are consumed by decomposers here is a comparison of food chain and food web if you see this is a web lots of food chains is there if you see here plants and then herbivores then carnivores oh, that is called primary consumer secondary tertiary and quaternary consumer that is called final consumer in the last so here are different trophic level trophic level means the level of their feeding this is first level of feeding then second third fourth and fifth but here you can see one thing is eaten by this one this one and this one and there are lots of food chains over there so uh, let's talk about decomposers decomposers are very very important in our life in all of the world some of the decomposers are bacteria and fungi they break down the dead bodies of the plants and animals into simpler food whatever the food you throw in the garbage or the dead plants animals or human beings which are buried under the grave and um every decaying substance is decaying due to the help of decomposers one word is compose means to make d means without means not to compose not to make means break down so decomposers help in breakdown or larger substances like what are the decomposers they are present in the uh, earth worm mushrooms they are fungi mushroom are also fungi so insects and bacteria they all are present on the ground and they are very very helpful because they consume or they break down all the stuff which is uh, dead 
if it does not happen so what can happen on the world you can just imagine smelly and just piled up and filled up with rotten and dirty and smelled material and that can also reduce the chemical fertilizers why because they break down this all uh, type of material and all the nutrients again go into the soil and from soil producer just take them and they make the food and then again animals eat them so we can see there are lots of bacteria are there and their fungi mushrooms can grow anywhere but all the mushrooms are not edible not eatable they are poisonous so be careful about eating them you can eat just only those which are in your market because they can grow anywhere in the ground because they are decomposers so they de uh, they decompose or eat dead plants animals and decomposes and reduces them in different forms so here is you can see the role of decomposers if you see they can like uh, producers primary consumers eat the producers they eat uh, these consumers and tertiary eat secondary consumers and when they die decomposes decompose them and in the soil these all materials go again to the producers the nut nutrition and they take the nutrition and, and get the energy and then make glucose and food for other organisms again wish you all the best and good luck uh, for the next lecture inshallah and i hope you understand this uh, lecture i think it gave you lots of information and you when you see around you that how the animals are adapted you can just um, keep them in the mind that they have adapted according to their environment so we will inshallah meet again in the next lecture wish you all the best.